Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I would like to compare four different microphones. Um, what we're looking at specifically is the distortion performance for each microphone. And it may come as a surprise to, I guess, most people. The um, Actually, I don't want to really give it away. So maybe I'll just save that for later. <laughs> um, I was told by another YouTuber that um, I should really leave the, like a cliffhanger till the end so that you watch the video all the way through. I don't really care. Um, I'll, I'll, basically, microphones do have quite a bit of distortion. So when you're attempting to measure the distortion of loudspeakers in the context of speaker building and DIY, um, you want to make sure that you have a good microphone. Um, so in this video, I compare four different microphones and we look at the performance of each. And uh, I think most might be surprised by this. Generally, I think it's assumed that loudspeakers have orders of magnitude more distortion than amplifiers, than measurement microphones. Um, I'm not sure why that's the case, but I was relying on uh, that general consensus for about 10 years where I assumed my measurement microphone uh, wasn't the bottleneck for distortion, that uh, it was a reliable uh, device to measure loudspeaker dif distortion. Um, so was I, was I safe to follow that advice? Well, let's, let's look at uh, this in more detail. So the microphones that I'm testing today are the Dayton Audio UMM6 reference measurement microphone. It's a USB type connection directly to your computer. It's this this first one is the one that I've been using for about 10 years. Um, it's served me well and it retails, I believe. Okay, so it's 137 US dollars. Second in the test is the Dayton Audio EMM6 and it's uh, the same as the previous, has the same diameter of capsule or diaphragm, which is a quarter inch. So both use quite a small diaphragm at only a quarter inch diameter. The difference between these two is that this one uses an XLR connection and requires a microphone preamp, which isn't a big deal. Um, I'm using the Scarlett Solo, uh, which connects to your computer via USB. I should note too that the Dayton here requires phantom power. And so that's just a little button on the front that supplies the 48 volt DC uh, to power the capsule. Um, third in the test is the Shure SM58, and it's a dynamic microphone. It retails for about 80 uh, US dollars each, and it has a 5 8 diameter diaphragm, so significantly more surface area than the previous two. The fourth in the test is the Echo Pacific 7052. It's also a condenser microphone, but the diameter is much larger at half inch diameter. And it uses uh, XLR and Phantom and requires Phantom power. Okay, so I'm going to uh, skip through my uh, blog here just to show you a picture. Uh, I'm gonna do it really quickly so you don't see any of the test results. Um, Okay, this is the test setup. So this is what I decided on and it works really well uh, to really kind of flesh out the differences between microphones. And so what I'm doing here is I'm playing a test tone. Microphone is placed about an inch, so it's, it's, near, it's a near field measurement. And so to test between the various microphones, I'm simply swapping out the microphone, repeating the same test signal at the same output level. And so if the microphones all perform exceptionally, then we shouldn't see a difference in the test results between the microphones. However, if the distortion is high on these microphones, uh, then we will see a difference in our test results when attempting to measure the distortion of the tweeter. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So I tried to make it as simple as possible um, and straightforward. And I've uh, included my test setup here if you want to try to replicate the same. Um, I settled on this tweeter after testing about five different tweeters 
and I should notice note as well the output level of the tweeter was 70 uh, dB now that's at one meter but you'll note that I'm much closer than that and so that uh, helps improve the signal to noise ratio so the actual uh, SPL level at the microphone is significantly higher and so I wasn't near clipping in any of the uh, gain structure so don't worry about that um, lots of headroom uh, so what we're seeing here is the uh, either the distortion performance of the tweeter or if the microphone is the bottleneck then we're going to see uh, various levels of distortion from each microphone so I hope that's clear um, so I'm going to jump back up to the top and we're going to look at the test results for the first microphone in the test which is the Dayton Audio UMM6 USB microphone and so I'm um, using a 12 band per octave test signal you can see here all these little lines represent test tones and so um, the grass black area is the distortion that's generated and so in this instance we can see that the distortion is 60 dB down from the peak of the fundamental test tones and so that's how I'm measuring the distortion today and that's a great way of really flushing out it's a good litmus test that brings out the distortion products in the device under test and so um, just remember that number uh, minus 60 dB and 0.1 percent distortion for the UMM6 uh, moving on to the next microphone the Dayton EMM6 um, we immediately see a distinctively different distortion profile in the results. Um, so obviously right off the bat we're seeing um, differences in the microphone itself. Um, same tweeter, same test signal, same level, distinctly different distortion. And so um, you'll, you'll notice that if we're looking at the 10 kilohertz region, it's minus 70 dB down but it quickly rises when you get into the upper treble and so we're only at minus 50 dB distortion at 20 kilohertz and so there's a kind of a distinct distortion profile with this microphone um, so moving on to the Shure SM58 um, which has the much larger dynamic diaphragm that doesn't require phantom power um, you can see here that our distortion is much lower. So across the bandwidth, um, we're at minus 80 dB. Um, so this is not a measurement microphone. It's an instrument slash vocal microphone, and it's blowing away the so-called reference microphones in the previous uh, two examples. So um, moving on to the ACO Pacific, um, this is a laboratory grade it uses the larger condenser diameter of half inch and you can see again it's providing even lower distortion minus 85 uh, db at 10 kilohertz you can see a little bit of noise product showing up there which is about 0 0.0056 percent distortion so um, this is a significant finding um, that it really highlights a couple of things uh, first of all we know Audiophiles generally know that swapping out upstream components has an effect on the perceived sound quality. That's, that's obvious. Anybody's going to agree with that. However, it flies against the notion that loudspeakers are multi orders of magnitude uh, higher distortion than amplifiers. Um, that's generally been the assumption that it's loudspeakers have um, orders of magnitude higher distortion than other upstream components but this really kind of challenges that assumption and you can see here in this instance that the tweeter that I used in this test has extremely low distortion and you could uh, you could argue that there's potential there that the tweeter is even lower distortion um, I had to go to great lengths to make sure that the test environment had like dead quiet noise in the sense that there wasn't any um, computer fan noise or refrigerator noise I had to basically unplug everything and you could hear a pin drop that's how I was able to get uh, this measurement by having that level of signal to noise ratio and you may you may argue well is that even audible like why does it even matter you're just like straining 
at something that isn't even relevant. Well, consider this. Um, I think it's generally known that ambient noise, such as HVAC systems or other like traffic noise, it really affects your ability to enjoy music. I continue and continually try to make my environment as quiet as possible so that I can hear that low level detail in the musical soundtracks. And so I get annoyed by a refrigerator in the other room. Um, I have to go. <laughs> There's a deep freeze in the basement here that I have to unplug and I have to set a timer so that I remember to plug it back in um, the, to that level. Right. And I think audiophiles can relate to that struggle um, and so that's the same struggle that I'm encountering here um, where I'm trying to get the test environment as quiet as possible to really bring out the the true performance of uh, the device under test um, whether it be your your loudspeaker or in this case it's the microphones that I'm trying to evaluate so um, so I go, I do, I'll post a link um, to the various microphones. Um, here's, uh, I, I do a full description of the test setup with the components that I'm using. Uh, for example, I'm using the Hypex FA501 amplifier, which does have extremely low distortion. I, I suspect that this test may not have been able, I wouldn't been able to replicate this test if I had used a more generic amplifier. Uh, that has higher distortion. So um, the Encore technology is generally recognized as being uh, world class for distortion. So, um, and then the tweeter was the AMT Pro from Dayton Audio, and uh, it had the lowest of the five tweeters that I tested, and so I chose that tweeter uh, for that reason. So, um, so there you have it. Uh, I think this is uh, really interesting. Um, the the Echo Pacific I purchased uh, based on a recommendation from a colleague. Uh, you can see it here. It it is quite expensive, and uh, but you can see by the test results it um, it does perform. So I will be using this microphone moving forward for all all of my testing. Um, so I took a I took a chance on it uh, based on the recommendation from a colleague. Um, and uh, I, when I say a chance, um, the reason being is that they have a zero return policy. And so um, I wasn't able just to test it out and return it if it didn't work out. So I'm very relieved um, that it does perform uh, as I had hoped. And so, uh, so that's good. So uh, there you have it. Uh, take care and have a great day.